This episode of Una Dose of Trace was graciously supported by Skillshare. Are you paying attention right now? Are you sure? Because research says you're actually not. But according to a study from- You know what? This is actually kind of weird. So what exactly is attention? Like when you're looking at something, what is happening in your brain to keep you focused? It might not be as simple as you think. And I have questions. Hey there, friend fam, I am Trace. Thanks for giving your attention to me just for a few minutes on Uno Dose of Trace. But right off the bat, you need to know, you're not actually paying attention to me at all. Yeah, attention is an illusion. It's not even real. I find attention interesting for a couple of reasons. One, I have ADHD. I was diagnosed in middle school, and at the time, it was pretty new, and people didn't really know what to make of it or how to treat little kids who had it. And what's horrifying to me now is that they actually taught us to distract ourselves rather than to learn how to pay attention. They were worried about disrupting other kids. I spent the better part of my life learning to manage my own levels of attention. And I still struggle with it, but I find the topic fascinating nevertheless. Number two, internet culture trains us to try and multitask. I say try because we cannot multitask. There is no such thing as being a multitasking human being. Hi friend, I know what you're thinking. You're typing that comment right now about how you multitask all the time and you're so great. You don't. Let me quote Earl Miller, neuroscientist. When people say they can multitask, they're deluding themselves. I'm gonna go back over here. Multitasking is funny because even though we can convince ourselves that we're doing two things at the same time, we're actually not. What we do is serial task. We do one task for a few seconds or a few milliseconds, then we switch to another, then back to the first. And you can see this in the brain. It's like we have one graphics card, one sound card, and one CPU in there, and they can only do one thing at a time. We've never done this before on Uno Dose of Trace, but let's try a test real quick. Performance is gonna be on the honor system, so say as many colors aloud as you can in the next 10 seconds, go. That's called the Stroop test. Okay, now let's go again, round two. Say as many colors aloud as you can in the next 10 seconds, go. Yeah, that second one is way harder, right? It's a cross-modal task. Your brain has to work in two ways to process written word recognition and visible color recognition. And it has to complete both of those tasks before you can spit out the word things. Because our speech centers are pretty good at word recognition, it's slightly faster, which makes this task difficult. Another thing that makes it hard is your brain can only do one thing at a time. Hi again, friend. Yeah, I know you did so great at the test. You're a wonderful little boy, but... It's not about how great you are. It's about how the task was more difficult the second time, wasn't it? I know it was, yeah, it was. Okay, I'm gonna go back to everybody else, okay. Serial tasking requires a little bit of attention too. And since we are biological, that task switching does cost energy and that's important. So back to attention. The Stroop test requires that cross-modal selective attention. You have to decide what to pay attention to when presented with only two stimuli. But when you're out in the world, there's way more stimuli, even here in this frame. There's me and my face and my hands and this shirt and the bookshelves and my new pretty butterfly, the music that's going really quiet, and your brain is tapping into all of that. And that's why it's hard to watch a thing and do something else at the same time. There's a lot going on, you hop back and forth, your brain makes assumptions to fill in the details and you miss things. This stimuli stimuli problem is compounded for people with autism, schizophrenia, or other attention disorders, including, of course, my ADHD. And we didn't even go into the mention of notification. Turn away! It's my turn! Go! Get out of here! Generally speaking, we all have experienced a period of intense focus, whether we're reading a book or watching TV. And it's just wonderful, isn't it? It's just enthralled. It feels so encompassing. It's one of my favorite feelings. It's like you turn off parts of your brain, but that's actually not it at all. Apparently, according to researchers, that level of focus is a complete illusion. Instead, our attention is coming in pulses. Every 250 milliseconds, or about four times a second, about every six frames of this video, your attention is pulsing. Four times every second, your attention wanes. It's like we're wired to be easily distracted. And if we choose to look at something else, well, we're out of it. Studies with mice show the thalamic reticular nucleus works as the switchboard. It helps control the amount of information the brain receives, limiting and filtering out sensory information that we don't want to pay attention to, like the fact that my butterfly just changed color. Haha, <laughs> yeah, you still can't multitask.
In reality, you sample little bits of the environment around you and your brain assembles that into one stream of attention. It's fictional. The sampling is that cycle, tiny waves of more attention and then less attention, more attention, less attention. That's the reality. The brain activity comes in pulses, which is related to those brain waves that you see on EEGs and movies and television. But that bit of knowledge is actually new. A Princeton study was the first to connect these specifics of our behavior to those pulses. Amazing, right? If we break down the mission here, it seems like evolution was trying to solve a very specific problem related to living in the wild. And that is that you never know what's about to happen. So you gotta be ready. This attention system lets our brains pay attention to one thing, but it also lets us choose to shift our attention to something else rapidly. And it does this all the time. Since we are biological and literally cannot pay attention to two things at the same time, we evolved to pulse our level of attention, like twisting a flashlight to the focus beam and then the wide beam over and over and over and over and over and over again really fast. So when you're staring at a book or a sunset or a baby or or whatever, your ancient brain is constantly pinging you to make sure you do frequent check-ins with your environment as a holdover from our ancient primate antecedents. We're not getting shorter attention spans, we're just worse at controlling these impulses. The illusion that our mind creates is that our attention is wide and also focused, but in reality, it's a cycle. So next time you're bathing in a single story, just soak it up, let all that focus wash over you. Be present, because it's rare. Your attention is pulsing constantly, and luckily our brains trick us into believing we are not weird biological robots, but we are. I firmly believe the more we know about ourselves and our experiences, the better that we are all gonna be at humaning. What do you think? Before you tune out, share this video with a couple of friends who think that they can multitask. This episode of Una Dose of Trace was graciously supported by Skillshare. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 25,000 classes in design, business, technology, photography, marketing, or film and video, which is my favorite, of course. You should try out the art of the story, creating visual narratives. Debbie Milliman is a delight. Skillshare is the perfect place to keep you learning and thriving in 2019. So, because you're here with me on Una Dose of Trace, you can get two months of Skillshare for free, and after that, it is still super affordable. An annual subscription is only 10 bucks a month. The first 500 of the nerd fam to use the magic link and join the more than 7 million creators learning with Skillshare will get two free months, and you support Uno Dose of Trace. It's a win-win. Fun fact about this story, it was mostly done thanks to two studies. Researchers at Princeton were studying macaques and discovered this attention cycle. So they pinged researchers at Berkeley to see if the same thing happened in humans and our brains turn out they work the same way and this never, ever, ever happens. Most of the time scientists assume there's a human analog for primate behavior, but in this case, they actually tested it and published both papers in the same issue of the same journal, which is amazing. And to be honest, requires a lot of focus and attention to timelines and details and all sorts of stuff. Whoa. Thank you so much for watching everyone. I put a couple links to the Stroop tests in the description in case you want to quiz your friends. The time code links is down there as well if you just want to send in the video. And thanks for watching Uno Dose of Trace. Let me know if you have questions about stuff. I love hearing ideas from y'all. Congratulations to us all on getting 20,000 subscribers. It's so exciting. And this journey is just getting started. All right, humans, I love you. I'll see you in the future.